The big question, which camera should I buy? It's such a hard question, man. It's such a hard question because it's, it's, it's like me asking you which car should you buy? Depending on what you want to do is the camera that will suit better for you. I can give you some advices on which cameras are my personal favorites, but this might not apply to you. So if you're up for that, come on, follow me. Regarding compact cameras, my favorite one, <laughs> oh, I was able to pick it up without watching, is this one, it's the Lomo LCA. It's my favorite because it's really easy to use. Just buy a film, put it on the back, uh, load the camera, select the speed of the film over here, and all you need to worry about is choosing how far away your subject is. And if you, the, the person or the thing that you want to take a picture of is at one meter or a little bit less, you set the distance to 0.8. If it's a meter and a half, a meter and a half, three meters or infinity. It's just four positions. You can't really go wrong. It's not that hard. And that's basically all you need to do about the camera. Just select the distance of your subject, open the camera, take a picture and the camera will do everything for you. Now cameras like this are many. This is my favorite. I will also highly recommend the Olympus X-A2 and the Olympus X-A3 or the um, yeah, the Olympus Strip 35 is also a really good camera. If you can find one that's actually working in pretty good condition. This camera uh, and the Olympus is that I said use batteries. Why? Because they're battery operated. Because the camera is doing a lot of things for you. It's basically thinking for you and taking the decision of how much light would it let go in into the film. So in order to do that kind of operations, it needs batteries. Now if you're thinking about going a little bit more serious with your hobby or you want to get your first camera and you eventually want to buy more lenses or you eventually want to learn how to take pictures by yourself, there are a few other cameras that I might highly recommend you getting. One of them is my personal favorite is the Minolta X700. Now this camera is great. There are many models of Minoltas and they're all more or less the same. On the channel I have tried this X700. I have tried the X300, I have tried the Centon DF300, which is a copy of the Minolta the, uh, X300. There are many of these, they're really easy to use. You can go to um, Aperture Priority, in which you'll decide the aperture that you will use and you focus and then the camera will decide the shutter speed, which is also pretty useful. Or you can go full manual in which you will decide all the parameters for the camera. So this is a camera that can grow with you as you progress further and further with, um, with your photography. So that's pretty good. There are others like this. This is not the only one. The Olympuses are great cameras. I already tried the OM2, which I enjoyed a lot and you can watch the episode. Um, of me shooting on the street without camera. Uh, this is the OM10, which is also an amazing camera. I will highly recommend it if you can get one with the adapter or you can buy the adapter separately. Now the camera in and of itself is basically an automatic camera, but if you add this to this camera, it becomes a manual camera. So now with this thing, you can decide everything that the camera will do. If you don't have this, you're stuck with a more or less automatic camera, which is not bad if you're just starting. Uh, the most common cameras are the Canon and Nikon. They're all over the place. Uh, you can get a Canon A1, you can get a Canon EA1 or whatever. I would personally not get an A1 or AE1 by Canon. I have an A1. Uh, I bought it for cheap many years ago and then it broke and there's no way to change anything. It's in the closet and I, I probably just toss it away or sell it for spare parts because there, it's more expensive to repair it than to actually get a new one. These are cameras that have light meters. Light meters are basically a device inside the camera or a, that you can attach to the camera that is battery operated and will tell you the amount of light there is in the scene and will tell you at which speed uh, or at which aperture you should use to take the best picture. That's, that's what a light meter does. There are some cameras that don't have light meters. Um, I wouldn't go into that if you don't know all the things about photography. Um, because you will not be able to take pictures. You will need to have an external light meter and you have to see the light and see, oh, you know, this is the shutter speed that I need and this is the aperture and this is the ASA. And you have no idea what these values mean. You'll be unable to take a pictures. Now, if you do know your way around photography and you want to get a manual camera without a light meter that is that doesn't require batteries at all, this is a good option. This is the Minolta SR1. There are many cameras without light meters. Um, 
I like this in particular because it looks like an R, an ER camera, but it's completely manual and it works super solidly. Uh, this is this month's camera for my patrons, uh, and I enjoy this one very much. This is a great camera. It's really, uh, it's built like a tank. You can tell. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's made out of metal and it works really well. Um, it's not automatic like the Minolta X700. It's manual and it, you can tell it's manual. It's great. Um, there's some other ones. Uh, you might find some Zenits. Problem with the Zenits is most of the time, not most of the time, but I have seen many Zenits that when you rewind the film, they, they tend to break the film. They're kind of brood cameras, so you need to have a little bit of care with them. Uh, some of them the light meter works, in some of them the light meter doesn't work, so it's a gamble. Please do not fall in the trap of trying to find the best camera because there's no one better camera than any other cameras. And please do not think that the more money you put on a camera, you will get the best results. Because in film camera, the big difference with digital camera and film cameras is that in film, the big difference between one camera and the other one uh, are two, in my taste, is the lens and the film that you use. So if you have an okay body, simple body, with a great lens and good film, you're gonna have amazing results. Um, if you take a picture with this camera, or with this camera, or with this camera, uh, and you put the same film on any of this, I will not be able to tell the difference with which camera was any ca picture taken. There's no way of telling, because these cameras, what film cameras do most of the time is just give you certain ways of getting around things to take the picture, but the camera itself will not affect the result. It's not like digital cameras that if you use a Canon or an Nikon or a Fuji, you will tell it was taken with them. In here, no, these are just black boxes with buttons and you can use any of this and if you use the same film, it's really impossible to tell with which camera it was taking. Um, unless the lens has a very specific character, but if you're just buying your first camera, you're probably gonna have like a random DSLR with some 50 millimeter 1.8 or something, which is an amazing lens, by the way. Now there's another thing that you might have heard somewhere and it's about SLRs versus rangefinders. These cameras are SLRs. This is a camera that you will look through here, then the image will bounce on a mirror and then it come here, bounce in another mirror and you will look through the lens. There are SLRs because they're single lens reflex, meaning they have one mirror that moves up and down when you take a picture. That mirror helps you to see through the lens. So what you see through the viewfinder over here is exactly what will appear on your final image. These are SLRs. There's a difference between SLRs and rangefinders. Rangefinders are cameras that you look through this window here, which is not connected to the lens, and what you're seeing is not exactly what you will take a picture of. Um, they're, they're focusing differently, and they're different cameras. Um, they use the same film though, so don't worry. But a rangefinder, usually they're more expensive. Usually the lenses for rangefinders are more expensive. Uh, some people will tell you these are the best cameras, you should get a rangefinder or whatnot. Uh, some people will get crazy and oh yeah, I want to get into rangefinders because the great classics had rangefinders. Why don't you use the money that you will expend on that camera of this quality and just buy some film. Get a decent SLR and buy some film, uh, a good lens and you'll be fine. So what have we learned today? The first thing is pick a camera that will suit your needs. Bear in mind every camera is different. There's no one camera that will suit all your needs. Um, some lenses will have different situations in which you will need them and some situations in which you will not. So it's a big world out there. My big, big, big advice would be get a camera that feels good on your hands. Like when you grab it, you feel like this is something that I want to spend time with and use that camera as much as you can by film. Uh, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. Try to buy film, fresh film. Go to a store and buy film. Support your local store. And buy, if, you, if you don't have a local store, buy through eBay, uh, but support people who are creating and exporting or just making film. I think that's the only way to keep this hobby alive. Um, so yeah, try to shoot as much as you can. If you, my, my big, big, big advice before I leave and my just, just trust me on this one, you will save 
a lot of money if you learn how to develop yourself. Now I have an old video of me just showing you how to develop your own film. Uh, if you want to take a shot and learn how to do it, it's super easy. You just need a few elements. If you know how to cook spaghetti, you know how to develop film. It's not more complicated than that. Uh, trust me on this one. You will save so much money and it will be also fun. You'll learn how to push film, how to pull film, what does that even mean? It's really easy, it's, it's super fun to make. Because if you buy a film camera and you just send your film for development over and over and over, the cost will add up. So learn how to develop your own film and, and you'll be fine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, uh, just drop it in the comment section. If you have a favorite film camera, and I haven't mentioned it here, please let me know why you think it's the best film camera uh, and we can have a civil discussion. Uh, these are my favorite picks. It doesn't mean they are the best film cameras. These are my personal choices. Uh, but yeah, I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week in which I will shoot a camera on the streets and I will take some pictures. Um, and that's it. Until then, I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you pretty soon. Keep shooting, guys.